Greetings from Esker Monastery near Athen Rye. And I'm here in the grotto on the grounds of Esker Monastery, the grotto of Our Lady. I just want to pick up on one story, maybe two, in the resurrection. And I like to think of people when they get called by their names. And the first story that I like to think about at this time is when Mary of Magdala, who loved Jesus so much, when she was at the tomb, the other women had left and Mary stayed there and she saw this, the young men dressed in white in their baptismal robes, as it were. They've taken my Lord away, where have you put him? And then next thing, there was somebody behind her. She thought it was the gardener. And uh, the person behind her said, what are you looking for? And she said, where have you put him so that I can go and take him? And uh, at that moment, one of those great stories, great moments in the story, the voice behind her, thinking, she was, thinking that he was the gardener, the voice said, Mary. And Mary looked up. There was only one person would ever say her name like that. And she turned, and it was Jesus. And she said, Rabboni. That's just the coming of Mary, Rabboni. The, the interaction between the two of them. They loved one another. And every disciple can be that Mary, and every disciple can hear his or her name called. And you can turn and say, Master, Master, Master. The other person that I love to think about is Thomas. We saw him the other day in, on Sunday in the Gospel, and we call him Doubting Thomas, but he gets a lot of mention in St. John. He gets four times in, the, in St. John's Gospel. First of all, the time when Lazarus died and Jesus was at least two days' journey away, and Jesus stayed on for two days, even though Lazarus had died and he told them he had died. And then he said, let's go now to Jerusalem. And the other said, you must be kidding. You're going to Jerusalem. They're all looking for you. They want to kill you. And Thomas said, come on, lads, come on. He says, let's go. We will die with him. So there is Thomas, full of courage. We meet him again during the Last Supper when Jesus says, I am the vine, I'm the branches. And then he went and he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I'm going, when I've come, I will, when I've gone there, I will come and bring you with me. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. And good old Thomas said, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Catch yourself on it, in other words. He was almost saying to Jesus. And Jesus looked at Thomas and said, I'm the way. I am the way to where I'm going, to where you want to go. And then we find him then in the story we had on Sunday where he refused to believe all the others could believe. I'm not going to believe. I will absolutely not until I can actually touch his hands, touch his hands and put my hand into the wound in his side. Maybe then I might. So I am not going to be moved by all this enthusiasm. And then when Jesus came and stood eight days later in the room and he showed them, he greeted them, peace be with you. And then he turned to Tom and he said, Thomas, put your, here, give me your hand. Give me your hand, put it into my hand. Give me your hand, put it into my side. And those great words of Thomas, my Lord and my God. That's when he really had come to faith. Jesus was his Lord and his God. It's the great prayer that the disciples of Jesus have said for the last 2000 years. And just after that story, at the very beginning of almost the very next story, we have the seven disciples in the boat up on the Lake of Galilee. They went back there. Peter said, Simon Peter said, come on, we go fishing. It's Fishing should be good. And they climbed into the boat. And who was the second name in the list? It was Simon Peter. There was Thomas called the twin. And then Nathaniel and James and John and two others. There were seven in all. And even that is significant too. And they caught absolutely nothing. So Thomas must have been frozen with the cold. But here he gets second place in the list of those who were in that boat after the resurrection. So we give thanks for Thomas. And then after that, the whole tradition is that Thomas, after the resurrection, after Pentecost, just began to walk east. The Lord took him as it were and brought him, made him face eastward. And 
that he eventually went to India. There is a very strong tradition amongst the Christians in India that Thomas the Apostle brought the Christian faith to them. So we give thanks for Thomas for his enthusiasm, for his questions, for his doubts, for his faith, and for his missionary zeal that he went. He just took off and went where the Lord sent him and he was filled with the Spirit. So between Mary hearing her name called by Jesus and then saying, Master Thomas, hearing his name and looking at Jesus and saying, my Lord and my God. So all of us are Mary, all of us are Thomas, and all of us are sent wherever the Lord sends us. So God bless you all. Our lady here behind us, she's watching. She was with the disciples. She would have been quietly there in the background, letting them sort it all out. What was the meaning of the resurrection? But she was with them. And we'll find her later gathered in prayer in the upper room, praying for the Holy Spirit. The disciples were gathered, we're told, together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and other women. So may she watch over us at this very difficult time as we are bewildered and wondering what's going on and realizing that the Lord is with us. God bless you all.